A recent three-part PBS documentary called The Age of Nature looked at environmental restoration projects around the world. One of those was about what happened after a dam was removed from a river in the Pacific Northwest and the area was restored to its more natural state. Projects like this have happened throughout the United States. Our next story goes to Traverse City, Michigan, where several dams were taken out and a research project is underway that could change the way fish are managed in rivers around the world. The Boardman is a, it's a unique river in the region, in the state. It's a 260 square mile watershed drains, glacial outwash, so that we have this very stable, cold, and high water quality system. Brett Fessel is a river ecologist with the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians. Our relationship with the river, at least historically, has tended to be more of this what can it do for us? How can we pull energy from it? How can we use it in a way that's going to benefit us? So everything else just lives with it and relies on it. The Boardman River is a 36-mile waterway in northwest Michigan with 160 miles of tributaries. The river empties into the Grand Traverse Bay, which is part of Lake Michigan. Today, the river runs freely from where it originates to a dam in downtown Traverse City. But that wasn't always the case. At the turn of the century, four dams were built along the river to provide hydroelectric power for a growing community. The dams changed the nature of the river and prevented native species of fish from moving up the river. By the year 2004, the dams were no longer generating power. Frank Dituri is Traverse City's Director of Public Services. The aging structures were were considered not economically viable any longer. They produced power for a growing city at the time, but they really didn't produce enough power or energy for them to be uh, for them to be upgraded or viable as power producers moving forward. When funds became available through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, the county and the city, along with other partners including the Grand Traverse Band of Ottawa and Chippewa Indians, agreed to remove three of the dams, Brown Bridge, Boardman, and Sabin, and modify the Union Street Dam in the heart of Traverse City. The effort was part of the Boardman River Ecological Restoration Project. There is no greater ecological bang for your buck than removing a dam. Because what it does to the ecological environmental systems by segmenting a river system, uh, keep, keeping populations uh, apart, uh, warming the water uh, on the backside of the dam, um, stopping the movement of nutrients both directions up and downstream. The goal was to restore the river to its original form and reconnect it to the Grand Traverse Bay and the Great Lakes. The first dam to be removed, the Brown Bridge Dam, came down in 2012. If you look at the bottom of the tree line, that was the level of the water that was in here when Brown Bridge was still operating. In addition to his work with Traverse City, Frank Dituri is also the chairman of the Boardman River Settlement Implementation Team. Once you remove the dam, you have all this organic material, organic soils with a seed bed that's been sitting there for 100 years or so, and then you add sunlight to it, that energy and the organic materials in the sand, it's, it's like this ecological explosion that you're seeing. It's absolutely amazing. Since the dam removal, researchers have seen an increase in the number of native brook trout. We're seeing that uh, the, fish, the fish populations that was typically somewhere 80% brown trout to about 20% brook trout, even out to where it's nearly 50-50 now. And that brook trout exists because it needs cool, clean water at a lower temperature. When you, when you see brook trout in your stream, you know you probably have the best ecological conditions for fish. The capstone of the Boardman River Project is a state-of-the-art research facility that will replace the Union Street Dam called Fish Pass. The goal is to allow native species to move up and down the river while blocking invasive species like sea lamprey. The program is unique because it will use a variety of technologies to determine which fish get to pass. Dan Zielinski is the principal engineer and scientist with the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and is leading the Fish Pass project. We know from experience a lot of these technologies, while they're effective um, in small, small cases, no one technology is, is the silver bullet here. So we're trying to, for the first time, combine everything 
um, to create a cohesive uh, process that can sort fish. First, selecting fish by size, so having screens or, or traps that parse out really large fish, and then using uh, successive technologies like putting traps in a certain location in the water column that species like sea lamprey would, are typically found so near the bottom, using sound or uh, manipulating the hydraulic conditions. So depending on how much turbulence or energy within the water, fish will either be attracted to that or be deterred by that. And then ultimately uh, using technologies like image sorting or image recognition to be able to identify species from uh, from one another and being able to parse out which one gets passed upstream and which one doesn't. The project is the first of its kind and is expected to serve as a model for other programs across the country and around the world. We've had participation from researchers from the Netherlands, uh, the UK. We've presented on this uh, in Australia and had a lot of interest there as well. So there's a lot of uh, global interest in this project because the, the need for selective passage isn't unique to the Boardman River. I mean, this is a problem that's around the world. The new dam facility at Union Street will feature additional amenities for visitors, including a pedestrian bridge, rain gardens, kayak and canoe portages, ADA access walkways, and special spaces designed for educational programs. On top of all that, what you get is the scientific outdoor laboratory that people from all over the region, nation, and globe will be coming to. They're already lining up for uh, experiments, starting to submit applications for some of the experiments that will happen at this facility. Groundbreaking on the site is scheduled for fall of 2020, and construction on the new facility is expected to be completed by the end of 2022. Research will begin the following year and will continue for 10 years. Automated fish sorting may be a decade away, but the impact of changes on the Boardman River can be seen and experienced today. This space, this place is probably one of my favorite uh, places to visit. I can remember the time standing here and we would not be able to have this conversation without yelling at each other because of the whine of the turbines and the falling water, you know, this completely industrial environment. And now I could sit here and not say a word and you can hear the wind. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.